In this video, I'm going to be discussing the importance of the mid-range shot on NBA 2K24. Now, this gameplay is a very, very good game to show you guys because we went into squad wreck as a three. Okay, there's only three of us. It's me, my god, Taish. You guys will see he's an absolute crazy mid-range player. Uh, and then we've got Jordy. So, Jordy is ba he's basically a center build, but because I'm a power forward and I'm seven foot and he's six eight, for some reason, the game keeps putting me at center. So, we're just going to swap that around. But this is my KD build. So, this build actually does have block because I'm tired of not being able to block some of these weak layup stuff. So, I wanted to come on a build that has a little bit more defense. And the team we're playing, you guys can see, they only have one guy that is black. So, I think it's probably one of their new friends or something. But they are running a zone. Okay, if you guys know anything about the zone now, before. You guys will definitely see the result of, obviously, the result at the end of the game. But one of the key things about the zone is, and the reason why the mid-range is so important, is you guys can see right there, I'm going to be breaking out some of these gameplay, right? The zone's biggest weakness is the midi, okay? Like, a lot of people that run zone are pretty much trying to kind of stuff away the three, right? Now, my play style and my guard's play style, Tish, which, which you guys will see, we predominantly mainly take midis. You, you guys will see the um, at the end of this game, our field goal. I barely take three sometimes. Some games I don't even take any three. Even though the build I'm using does have an 83 ball, I do prefer to take the mid range. Okay, now the mid range is so effective against the zone. Now, again, the other thing I was going to talk about before when you guys look at the score, but at the end is like, oh, fear, why are you guys not passing to the randoms? It's not like we're not passing to the randoms. You guys can see the team was running a very good zone, right? And the randoms, they've, they've never played against that, a team that run a zone. So you guys can see they were getting a bunch of turnovers. So what they ended up doing was they pretty much just gave up the, you know, the position. The point guard is just like, you know what? I can't do this. Like, I'm going to let you guys run the ball. So what's going to end up happening is Tayshia is going to end up bringing the ball. And me and him, we've been playing together for a lot of years. And we've played so many teams that run the zone. And again, the mid-range, the reason I like playing with him is because he predominantly takes midi. And when I play with point guards, honestly, I prefer the guard to take mid-range over threes because it's a more consistent bucket now one of the things we like to do in the zone you guys can see he likes to predominantly kind of stand he goes straight in between the zone okay between the two threes and he likes to go straight into the middle into the heart of the zone because it causes a lot more problems a lot more confusion now you guys can see he's also i'm not gonna lie when it comes to the post fade he's the best post fade player i've ever seen now one of the things i'm breaking down into this gameplay is also the off ball movement you guys can see my movement right here that movement, you guys can see, dragged the center away from Tej, allowing him to have this wide open coverage shot. That's another thing I'll be talking about throughout the entire game. Whilst the midi is very, very important, the off-ball player is also just as important when it comes to the mid-range. Now, you guys can see again, Tej is doing his thing. He's going to go into the midi. And what I end up going to do right here, you guys can see again, the mid-range shot is so, so important. Especially again, like when people are running 2 3 or 3 2, doesn't really matter. Okay, that zone area is so crucial. But once again, you guys can see, bro. Look, I'm telling you, okay, trust me, it's annoying to guard someone like him because he he doesn't like taking threes. Okay, he predominantly takes these stuff right here. You guys can see the, the thing about this gameplay right here, which is why I'm going to talk about it a little bit more when it comes to off ball movement, is every single time I like to be on the opposite side of Tay. So right here, you guys can see he was on the left side. But as soon as he hopped for the midi, I went straight to the opposite side, okay? It's always best to keep on the opposite side because what I'm trying to do is also take the shot blocker away, okay? I'm trying to deter the shot blocker from being able to contest him because you guys can see right there, he did make the shot. But if he had missed because the center stepped up, I would have got the rebound. That would have been an easy rebound for me. And again, this is going to be one of those off-ball movements in terms of knowing what to do in the zone, okay? What you guys are going to see right here, I'm just going to stand still. I'm going to stand still because I wanted to overload. Now, these are the kind of things you just know by experience. This is a, more of an experience type of thing. But again, it's part of the mid-range. You guys can see. I'm just going to stand in the middle right there. You guys, I didn't even move. Because what I ended up doing is it overloaded the guy running one of the top of the zone. Because the center is refusing to step up, right? If the center is refusing to step up, you guys just pretty much want to overload it. Okay, these are, again... Part of the mid-range, but also part of a way to break down, especially the 2-3. Again, we've been playing 2-3 for years. Again, that's one of those things where I go into the opposite side. Every, whatever he's doing, I like to be on the opposite side of things. Now, some of you centers, you guys are so annoying sometimes because you'll be setting screens um, for the guy that's posting up. Now, this play is super important as well. You guys, you guys, you guys will see. I was going to run to the my dunker spot right there, but then I realized Jordy, who's our third, He's already there. Now, his build is insane. He's got 93 driving dunk and 90 standing dunk. So, as soon as I realized he was there, y'all can see I backed up straight away because I just wanted to look. Right here, this shot is crazy because the center didn't even bother jumping. 
The center didn't bother jumping because he knows I've been going into the paint, right? So every time he tries to move out of position, so again, it's all about sort of understanding, yes, the mid-range is important, but it takes sometimes two or three players to make it work effectively. Again, trying to go to the weak side. The crazy thing about my build is the way I'm playing, you wouldn't even think I can shoot threes, right? But it's because I'm playing for the situation, for, for the gameplay. Now, you guys can see this absolute crazy putback. I told you, he's got 93 driving dunk on an 86. But I don't know what that build is, but that build's going crazy when it comes to finishing on this game. But once again, you guys will see, at this point, the center is not even contesting Tayshia anymore. He's not, he's not contesting my guard because you guys can see, I'm in that Duncan spot, right? Now, the mistake a lot of these centers make sometimes when someone's posting up, You'll be setting screens on a guy that's posting up because you guys don't understand how it works, right? What you want to be doing most of the time is depending on how the guy works, right? If the guy's very good when it comes to taking mid-range, you want to be able to just go on the opposite side and kind of patient and wait for him. Now, this game, this play, again, kind of the mid-range importance. But right here, I made a slight mistake because me and, Ter me and Tish kind of interchange. Y'all can see he cut right there, which was a great cut because the center dropped. But then I didn't, I didn't react in time. Okay, I was a bit slow on my pull up because the cut was pretty much a distraction to pull the center. Now, obviously, if it was a good cut, I would have thrown alley -oop, okay? But that cut wasn't the best, but it was enough to drag the center away from me, creating that opening. Now, you guys can see at this point, before you guys start getting onto us, okay? We did try to get the randoms involved, but trust me, it was. you guys can see, even though we're scoring, they are still in the game because it was a tough game, okay? This was a very, it was one of those decent squad games that we did tend to play, but a lot of squads don't play guys that predominantly take middies. So they kind of struggle, especially when they run the zone. Now, this play is also very important when it comes to the mid-range shot, especially against the zone, because what I did in that play was I kind of analyzed and kind of looked at the situation. Y'all can see I'm looking at the Duncan spot right there. The Duncan spot was taken away. And also, I realized the center wasn't guarding me. These are two things, okay? They've got the smaller player guarding me, and I'm seven foot tall on this build, okay? So as soon as I realized that, I just hopped away from him and keep taking it. Right here, just, just so you guys can see, before you guys start trying to go oh, fear, we did try to get the randoms involved. Y'all can see I threw a good alley oop to the random right there. He missed, and they made some crazy contested shot. Now they're up in the game. So even though we're going crazy, these guys are still in the game. Now, this is another thing that I'm also going to talk about. So you guys can always see every single time, especially when the team is running the zone, it's important to see what the, the, the guy in the paint is doing. Because you guys want to drag that guy away from the paint. And it's always annoying when someone goes to the opposite side of, of, of him. So pretty much the low block side of the, the paint. Because that is super irritating. Now you guys can see all this off-board movement. My movement is pretty much to give Tash a bit more space. Okay, Sometimes you all need to understand. Just because you're moving doesn't mean you have to move for you to get a bucket. It's about creating space, creating opening for your teammates. Right here, that was a wide open shot for, obviously for, for Tash to make. Unfortunately, he missed. He doesn't make 100% of his shot. But that was, a, no, that was just an unfortunate miss. But even if he does miss, I'm always ready to kind of go for the board right there. Because it's just, it's super important for me to be, I have to kind of work together with him. And he's working together with me. But right here, look, he's very low in the post right there. And another mid-range shot. Again, these teams are probably used to guys wanting to hunt for threes. But again, my play style and his play style is so different. Once again, that was the random missing, okay? Before you all be like, oh, you guys are just ignoring the randoms. No, we're not ignoring the randoms. We tried to get them involved. Plus, they could have left this game at any time. They didn't leave the game because they knew, like, they we're trying, like, we're not ignoring them. You guys see, Tate was just going crazy this game, okay? There's anyone, there's any player I can trust with my, with anything, okay? It's him, okay? His play style, we, we again, it's probably years of playing together. That kind of helps. But you guys can see, once again, with this play, that run to the paint from Jordy was so important and so crucial because that allowed the center to drop down a little bit, which created space for me to go into, into the mid-range. So whilst the mid-range shot is also important, it's also important how your teammates are moving. The off-ball movement of your teammates allows those space to be created a lot more easily. Now, obviously, if we had a full five, this would have been a lot more easy because we could just run those plays and everyone knows what to kind of do, okay? Now... At this point in the game, we finally got some level of separation from them as Tayshia was just going absolutely crazy. Pretty much me and him just kind of backpacked. Obviously, Jordy was very, very important as well because he was getting all the rebound for us, um, which wouldn't be possible. But again, yeah, just, just to show you guys the, the random we had this gameplay, this was this was what would have happened if we let them run the game. Okay, A lot of you guys don't necessarily know the mid-range and how to kind of take it. You guys can see right here, Tish is going to be doing some crazy stuff, the last minute stuff to do in the game. He's, yeah, I mean, I'm glad he got blocked right there because he should have, <laughs> he did no sportsmanship. But anyways, 
that is pretty much the the end of the game and i just wanted to kind of obviously emphasize the important importance you can see i didn't even take a single three this game i did not take a single three this game i think tage probably barely took any he only attempted three threes this game and we both still dropped 30 plus because again when it comes to the mid-range a lot of teams are not used to it um especially for two guys that are very very good at taking them Tayshia is much better than me when it comes to the midi i would have to admit that okay like he's been doing it for years he's been doing it since 2k17 okay that's literally been his play style i was more of a traditional center on 17 on 18 19 i think my play style started to change a little bit on uh, 22 that's when i started to incorporate the post game into my game style but he's been doing it over for the last well, five to seven years and i've been i've been noticing how he plays and i've been trying to kind of complement his play style hence the reason why it's a, it's a better connection when me and him run the pick and roll even against some of the toughest zone blocks. i mean we played so many zones in the past that is crazy obviously these are rec zone it's a little bit easier but we play team zone that's been absolutely going crazy. But y'all let me know, man, what you guys think about the mid-range this year. I think a lot more players are taking it, which is great. And I hope more people kind of get to go away a little bit from the three and start to take a bit more mid-range because it's a lot easier to kind of play and kind of deal with. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy this video. And I'll catch you in the next one.